has to be scarce? Who determines how many Bitcoins there are allowed to be? And how is it, how is it scarce? That's a great question. And in fact, the, the, the very concept of digital scarcity was a complete oxymoron until the invention of Satoshi Nakamoto. So the way Bitcoin is produced is by a set of rules that are enforced by everyone who participates at every step of the way. And so as um, new Bitcoin enters into circulation, it enters into circulation primarily as a reward for those who are ensuring that the rules are followed by doing certain security things. We call those miners, uh, but effectively what they do is they verify that every transaction is correct, it's properly signed by the person who wanted to do the transaction, they check that the money isn't being spent twice, they check that the person who is spending it actually has that money, they, they, they check that it was spent at the right time and various other conditions. In return for doing this work, they get rewarded, but they also have to put down um, kind of like a bond, a guarantee by spending energy. Uh, if they do it wrong, they've already put down the energy, but they don't get any reward, so they end up losing. Um, if they do it right, they've put down the energy, but they get reward, so they make a small profit. And this keeps everything aligned. We don't need to know who they are or why they're doing this because they're incentivized to do this. So basically we buy security with energy. Um, the end result is that no one's in charge um, and the rules that everyone agrees on, which are written in software, get enforced by everyone. Um, the miners check us, we check the miners. Um, when I'm running the Bitcoin software, I'm checking everybody and everybody's checking all of my transactions. If we think that one of the transactions is wrong, our software will flag it and reject it, and then it doesn't go anywhere on the network. One of those rules is how much new Bitcoin enters circulation. And that was set at a fixed amount every 10 minutes uh, back in 2009. And then every four years, it gets cut in half in a grand event um, that's called a halving. Um, three of those have happened. The last one happened in July, uh, and it was when the amount was cut to um, six and a quarter Bitcoin per block, per 10 minutes. Um, in four years, it's going to get cut to three and an eighth. Then four years after that, it's going to be 1.7, et cetera, et cetera. And it keeps decreasing until eventually, a hundred years into the future, um, the last block that has Bitcoin as a reward in it is issued and it only has the smallest unit, which is a Satoshi. If you do the math, you know, 50 every 10 minutes for four years, then 25 every 10 minutes for four years, then 12 and a half, then, and you keep going down that route, you end up with a number that is 21 million. In fact, it's a few bobs short, it's 20,999,999,999.999 something like that. Um, Can you so, break down a Bitcoin into like millions of bits? You, a single Bitcoin can be broken down into a hundred million subunits called Satoshis and Jeez. named after the owner. So um, 21 million Bitcoin is 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis, uh, which are, all get issued by the year 2140. And after that, the network continues to operate based on transaction fees, which pay the miners to do security, uh, but there is no more Bitcoin issued. Now, interestingly enough, before 2009, scarcity in a digital thing was an oxymoron. After 2009, a digital scarcity is now the most scarce thing that has ever existed. Because we talk about other things being rare, diamonds, which aren't rare, uh, gold, you know, whatever. Yeah, gold is rare on this planet as far diamonds as- Diamonds aren't know. rare? No, that's a, that's a, a scam cartel marketing plan by the De Beers uh, consortium that organized persuading you that they're rare. Um, really? They're actually, yes, they artificially inflate the price. Um, they're not. Interesting side story. Um, they're not actually rare. Uh, they're at, at least 10 times more plentiful than the price would suggest. And they very, very carefully control the supply to keep them from being, uh, from having their price dump. Um, gold is somewhat more rare 
we know that because we keep trying to extract it at great price. But then again, there could be an asteroid flying around the solar system on a thousand year orbit that's going to come by the Earth pretty soon that's made of 100 trillion tons of gold because gold is made in stars. So we don't know how much is out there. Well, we do know how much is out there. A lot, <laughs> infinite amounts, right? Um, so any physical substance is only rare in a certain context. You can say, okay, water is rare in the Sahara, but not in the Great Lakes region. Um, it's really interesting when you think of a digitally created artificial scarcity that is more rare than anything that's ever been done because the constraints are mathematical. So we can say that the rules of Bitcoin, which make Bitcoin what it is, say you cannot make more than 21 million. Those rules cannot be broken without breaking the system and creating something that isn't Bitcoin, which people would ignore. And Based on those rules, we know exactly how much is going to be issued right now and in the next 10 minutes and all day today. Um, and so that gives us a degree of certainty that has never existed. It's a, it's a fascinating design idea. It's a fascinating invention. Um, and it has some really interesting implications for economists who you know, have never seen anything like this. It's a very abstract idea when you, in terms of it's thinking of money. It's not any like you have to completely re, restructure your understanding of money and how money works. So, yes. So every revolutionary, ten, revolutionary. not evolutionary. Absolutely. So every 10 minutes at the current, at the moment, it's what, four Bitcoin or six Bitcoins? Six, six and a quarter. Yeah. Every 10 minutes, all of the transactions of the past 10 minutes or whatever else is waiting to be included in a block to be verified gets bundled in a block. A block is just like a bucket that we put all of the transactions and batch them so they can be recorded on the global system. Um, so every 10 minutes, a new batch of transaction is recorded. And the first transaction in that batch is one that creates this new Bitcoin uh, and issues it to the miner who completed the verification. All the miners around the world are, are there. They have like CPUs or computer towers or something that are processing all this information from everyone around the world that's making transactions. And yes. they're bundled into one block of information. That's correct. And the block and inside it has a special number called a proof of work. And in order to find the special number that fits the puzzle, there's a mathematical puzzle involved, you have to spend a lot of energy. And the only reason you spend that energy is as a demonstration of your commitments that you've done the security correctly, that you've done the verification correctly. Um, the energy isn't necessary to do the verification. And it doesn't matter how many transactions you're verifying, that doesn't cost anything to verify them. The reason we spend the energy is as a show of commitment. It's the table stakes, quite literally, to participate in the mining process. Um, and because only one miner wins each round of 10 minutes, and because they have to spend all of this energy, if they went and did that and, and messed up the security verification, they would end up losing a lot of money. And that's just the system of incentives. It's, it's, it, the only purpose of that is to incentivize people to do security without having to know who they are or check their work or, um, or, or you know, chase them around or take them to court. Uh, it's, it's just a mathematical system of rewards.